Craig from Cousins Cooling and Heating. Look at this. Look what he sent me, folks. The guy, he just, what a great guy. Sent me up a mug so I could have my fresh coffee. It just came this morning, but I already had my coffee poured. So, Craig, next time, sitting on the desk, it's ready to roll. I got to say thanks to you and Deb for doing that. Um, look, I got to talk to you a little bit about, you know, air conditioning this time of year is crazy. Um, I know I'm, I'm lucky with my house. It, it doesn't get too warm. I have uh, the, the geo turned in reverse, so it works out really well. Yeah. But talk to me about this. Is there a waiting list? Like how did, you know, I'm, I'm sure you're getting just inundated with calls. So let's talk a little about all of a sudden the heat wave and business wave that comes with it. Absolutely. Uh, first and foremost, as always, thank you so much for having me, Dave. I always love being here with you. I have great talks. Um, yeah, absolutely. We were blown away. When I say we, I'm talking as an industry. Uh, when that first heat wave came, uh, phones started ringing off the hook. So just highly, highly encourage homeowners to be proactive. Um, they are recording, you know, some of the biggest heat waves coming that we've seen in the past five plus years. Um, so, you know, a lot of companies are really starting to book out and get, uh, you know, far ahead. So, then it turns into, okay, well, who can get here first? Um, the responses I was getting after the first heat wave was, thanks a lot, Craig. Uh, I'm going to look around uh, just to see if someone can get here quicker. And then I was getting callbacks saying, oh, do you still have that date available? Um, and that happened. We have six already, six documented jobs that we've booked uh, that that happened to different people that when they call competitors and so out there, it is, you know, it is happening because people are waiting to, you know, the last minute, don't get caught on that folks. Um, you know, be proactive and, and get ahead of the game out there and just get your system, you know, either checked or if you have any concerns or wondering, because when that heat snaps, uh, it, it's shocking to a lot of people. And what a lot of homeowners don't know, um, is technically speaking. Now let's talk from a manufacturing standpoint for a quick second here. All air conditioners that are made in North America to meet government and regimental standards are only designed to lower your house 10 degrees below the outside ambient temperature. Now, with better windows, doors, insulation, all that stuff, obviously we can get your house down you know, below that to whatever comfort setting you want. But from a technical standpoint, as you know, a technician, you know, when we send a guy out and he says, Hey, you know, my unit's been running for 24 hours. Well, yes, but you just turned it on and it's currently 28, 29 in your house with 80% humidity. It's going to run for that long and it's going to take quite a long time to get down to your desired comfort level of 21, 22, 23, whatever. And also drop that humidity from 80% down to a comfortable, you know, 55, 60%. So when we leave our ACs off and only turn it on when all of a sudden that real heat comes in, you're setting that unit up for an unrealistic expectation because manufacturing guidelines say it only needs to get 10 degrees below. Now, like I say, they can do it and we can get further than that, but that's where we do see systems having to work harder, which in turn, if it's been sitting for six months and all of a sudden now you turn it on, now you have a much bigger chance of it breaking and or having something go wrong and sadly folks like everything in the world today repairs and costs are going up so don't get caught it's a good time to remember to have your maintenance plan absolutely yes we have because wonderful maintenance there plan you go you'd out. be ready yep. you know in the spring you guys are going to check that out make sure everything's working fine and be set to go when your air is needed I, I, and a lot of people wait like you said and i don't understand society why we do it we wait till the last minute right we, we like uh, oh you know, and then you're hit or, yep. and, yep. and the, you know, I, it's funny you brought that up because I, I read this morning that they figure in the next four years, 1.5 degrees, that's how much warmer everything's going to get in the yes. world. Like that's crazy incredible when you, I know it doesn't sound like much, but mm -hmm. folks, it's a lot well, <laughs> and it it's going to change it, things again. It is a lot, but let's compound that and let's go one step further. So right now in our geographical area, there is a bit of a talk about how our summers are getting hotter. Statistically speaking, they are getting hotter, but as you just mentioned, Dave, only by you know half a degree or so. But as the polar ice caps are melting and different things are happening, what we are seeing all across the world is drastic increases in humidity. So that's why instead of it being 24, 25, 26, now it's 26, 27, 28, but it feels like 34, 35, because we're used to humidity levels, you know, between 60 to 70%. We are now seeing humidity levels in southern ontario in excess of 80 percent which is something that is unheard of and now all of a sudden it feels like 
34, 35, 36. So again, when you set your unit up and it you know, feels like 34 degrees, technically speaking, that air conditioner, doesn't matter how big, how small, whatever furnace you've got when it's paired, even if you have the top of line system, it's only going to design to get your house to 24, 25 degrees. Now, again, we that's, know it can get colder, but yeah. that, that's what the manufacturing guidelines say is an expectation. But if you set your system up a little bit early, get ahead of that heat snap so that it doesn't have to work as hard, now you can protect your equipment and you can make your house much, much more comfortable. I never even thought about the humidity. That's a great point. Like it, when you start factoring that in, and that's something we all look at now as feels like. Like, right. you know, yeah. you look at the temp and then you look at feels like, right? Exactly. That's what you go by. Yep. But it's, yeah, that part of it, that aspect of it has changed dramatically in the last 20 years. So, Dramatic. you know, I, I think it's just something to be more uh, cognizant of folks. Like, you know what I mean? Like we're really not aware until the heat hits us. And then we're, like you said earlier, then we're all panicky. You know, and yep. if you don't have a maintenance plan with cousins, you know, if you don't have, the, and, and that's it. If you're trying to get a new air conditioner these days, you're probably going to be waiting aren't you, for a big, bigger unit. Well, exactly. And we're trying, you know, we've, we've increased staff and we've done things to better service our customers that are fully licensed technicians to make sure that we can get everybody in in a timely manner, but it is a much bigger deal. And by having an AC done properly, you know, humidifiers, you can go to Home Depot, Home Hardware and pick one up for, you know, a few hundred dollars and have it installed. You know, and, and you're going to be in that bracket. The whole home dehumidifiers are a totally separate thing that are becoming big in this industry. I just quoted the smallest one that manufacturers make, which is 80 pints per day. And it was around $3,200. It's almost the cost of an air conditioner. Yeah. So putting a humidifier on your system for a few hundred dollars is possible. But if you have a home where you need the opposite because of how good windows, doors, insulation, roofing you have, the humidity in your house is out of control. You need to remove that humidity. If you have to add a secondary system, it's a whole separate unit now. It's not like just a plug and play, like a humidifier. So by having your air conditioner on early, by having it maintained in service and having it set up to work properly, you can get ahead of all this, save yourself loads of money and make your home comfortable. Comfortable yeah. without breaking the bank. Uh, a couple of questions left here. Uh, the video we did last month on scams, I want a quick update on that because people were, that seemed to hit a, hit a nerve. Like you said, I think a lot of people were uh, feeling like someone's taking advantage of them, right? And just reiterate what you need to, to look for if someone's calling you or coming into your home. So just first and foremost, anybody, if, if you don't know who this person is and they haven't been personally invited by you reaching out to a company, you know, I highly encourage you to stop right there. There is a lot of new techniques in regards to reaching out to consumers now and homeowners specifically, whether it's through social media, whether it's through direct phone call, whether it's through mailing, where they appear that they're part of an affiliated company that you may recognize, but they're not. Um, the scams are getting out there, you know, getting out of hand. And as I mentioned before, you know, we would love for you to call us if you've got any questions or concerns. But if you have a local HVAC guy that's not us, that is your guy, call him first before you let anybody else in the home. Explain to him what's going on. We are a nice small community. I have very good competitors. We are competitors at the end of the day, but we do have a lot of mutual respect for each other. And we all are on that same page. If there is something that you're unsure of, if you get this odd phone call, if you get this weird thing that you think is from Enbridge or, you know, a utility supplier, but you're not sure, call your local HVAC guy. We're here to answer the phone and help you go through it because it is getting worse and worse and worse. In the month of May, we had five of our customers that were approached by an outsourced company out of London, pretending that they were an affiliate of ours that we have never even heard of or known anything about before. And sadly, um, you know, when you look at their reviews online, they have very positive reviews. But uh, as we discussed before on the call, when you look at their reviews through the Better Business Bureau, it was detailed everything that they do as part of a scam. So it's it's that fine line with the world today, folks. And just if you're unsure of the slightest thing, call us, call whoever your other local guy is. We're all here to help and we're all on the same page that these big cities are coming in here with quote unquote scams. 
and they're offering everything. The two in particular that stood out for us last month, we come to find out that the guys that were offering to come in the home and do work had zero licenses, none whatsoever. And so they technically had zero training, zero licenses, zero, you know, knowledge of what they were offering to this customer. But because of the presentation they put forward, it appeared they were coming from a utility provider in regards to an affiliation with us it's not the case just do your homework like exactly you know, just and again always err on the side of caution if it sounds yep. too good it probably is and, and as much as i agree with you dave if you don't feel like even doing your homework then just call us or call one of the other guys here we'll tell yeah. you we'll tell you you don't have to yeah. do the homework we'll do it for you and we'll let you know if it is on the up and up or, or what is going on out there because it's our responsibility to stay up with our industry and what's going on with any government programs. And speaking of government programs, that's my last question. Any, any news, anything coming down the pipe that you're hearing about? There, as as... The only thing I'm hearing about, I'm hearing two things at this time. One is that there's a possible program coming from Enbridge. We've seen some dollar amounts. It was hoping to kick off June 1st at this time. As far as my knowledge, it is not out there yet. We're still waiting to find out whether where we feel as the contractor that we've responded to them is if a home energy audit is required, because that yeah. could delay the process, you know, several weeks to which, you know, a lot of consumers are going to say, well, I'm not going to wait several weeks for an AC. You know, I, I, I need it now because the heat is yeah. here. So yeah. we're waiting to find that out. Other than that, there was a federal program we've heard of, but it sounds like that's not going to happen until next summer. Uh, but that is going to depend on who's in power with the election coming up. So I, I apologize that I don't have a ton of details, but at this time there isn't really a lot going on. There's a lot of conversation. There's a lot of talk, but there is nothing that is formal and moving forward yet, yet. How do people get a hold of you, Craig? 519-428-3241 is our direct phone number to the office here. You can talk to myself or any of the ladies. Uh, Deb or Terry, happy to help. You can always find us on our website, cousin.ca. Or you can always email me directly, Craig at Cousin, that's C-A-U-S-Y-N, coolingheating.com. All one together. Thanks, bud, for doing the show. Can't wait to talk to you next month. Stay cool, eh? Always a pleasure, Dave. Thank you so much for having me.